General relativity is the currently favourable model of space and time, whereas quantum mechanics deals with the stuff, matter, if you like, which appears in space and time. Quantum theory is really quite an extraordinary subject because it does have a very profoundly challenging conceptual background, and yet also it's incredibly useful. I mean, the whole modern world works because of quantum mechanics. Every electronic device we have around the house, in the lab, everywhere, is based on quantum theory. So it's amazing, actually, that a subject that is so profoundly sort of mystical almost is also so useful. At the school, a physics master lent me a book. I just opened it at random and I saw an equation. It was written down. And this equation was somewhere very fundamental. It described how things were. And it, I was astonished. It was just a string of Greek symbols. And there was some I didn't recognise at all. There was, there was a letter H with a bar through it. It was sort of very mystical. And there were hats over things like that. And it, oh, the whole thing was extraordinary. That's when it suddenly hit me. How can it be that you can describe the world in some depth with strings of letters? And that absolutely fascinated me, that idea. And that's when the idea of actually becoming a theoretical physicist first started in my mind. The second uh, thing that happened that really triggered me into doing theoretical physics was when I was in my gap year with the GPO. And one lunch I had nothing much to do, I wandered up into a library, picked a book off the shelf at random. And it turned out to be a book by David Bohm, a very well-known uh, physicist on quantum theory. I opened the book and I realised that it was the same strings of letters and things that I'd seen only much more developed in this previous book. And that's when I really finally decided, okay, I've got to do this, I've got to understand this, it's just so profound. The fascination in theoretical physics is always the same really. It's this strange business that mathematics can describe the world and that you can make predictions with mathematics about how things are going to happen when they actually it works. The universe works, it's out there, it's real, it works. That's incredible, I think. I used to think from time to time about why did we use the mathematics that we did to talk about space and time? I and mean, basically, we use real numbers. But why do we do that? So in ordinary mathematics, a statement is either true or false. And also, the things either exist or they don't exist. But apparently, in Topos theory, it is the case that you can have statements that are partly true. And what's even more extraordinary, mathematical entities that can partially exist and partially not exist. And that degree of partial existence is, is actually specified in a very precise logical mathematical way. And it suddenly hit me, wow, that's quantum theory. I thought, there's got to be a way you can use topos theory in quantum physics. I was so excited I couldn't sleep that night at all. One of the reasons for doing this topos theory wasn't just to do quantum theory and general relativity. It was to try and find a different way of doing theoretical physics altogether. And it does actually give you that. It does give you a different framework, a much bigger framework for discussing or applying maths to physics than existed before. You have mathematics which takes you, as it were, from one type of experiment to another. And it, it predicts a relation between the two experiments. But in between, there's, there's like a path in mathematical path that goes from one to the other. And if you ask, what does that path mean? There's no, you can't possibly, there's no answer. It's just in there in the mathematics. It's, it's where mathematics gets to places that human reasoning can't. And that's one of the fascinations of theoretical physics, actually, uh, is that mathematics has this extraordinary ability in the not just to describe the world, but to take you beyond the current understanding and suggest new ideas, which turn out to be correct. As far as my best work is concerned, I think it's the stuff on top of theory. I think I had a genuinely original idea. <laughs> and I can tell you, original ideas are very rare, actually, in science. It's a very abstract way of earning a living, I have to say. Hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com.